<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. And now, boys and girls and apes and squirrels, it's time once again to get out your trapper keepers and your letterman jacket. And if you don't have a letterman jacket, your Jay Leno sweater. <laughs> those two, those two are related. The letterman jacket and the Jay Leno sweater. Because it's homework time yet again here on the Pope on Film podcast. Yes. <coughs> A very, very special homework, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Attention, the Internet. This podcast regularly regularly assigns homework to its listeners in the hopes of bettering them, nay, the globe. (laughs) And this week, we are learning what happens when you turn away from God. You are instantly turned into a murdering rapist with Fidel Castro candy. (laughs) yes this week we are continuing our trip into the world of christian scare films and the films of ron ormond and estes perkle yes specifically the horribly titled if footmen tire you what will horses do which uh which i still haven't figured out (laughs) Horrible fucking name. That's right up there with Tu Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Yes. In in the world of uh, movie titles that you'll never freaking remember. And you know what I what I saw the other the other day? I was looking for info on if footmen tire you, what will horses do? And um interestingly enough, um what is it? The original Alamo Draft House. Yeah. Last week showed this movie at its theaters. They found nice. they found a rare sixteen millimeter original print of if footmen tire you, what will horses do? And showed it as a special screening for like three bucks a pop. Which means that once again, we're at the forefront yes, we are. of everything. People are just, you know. Here they come again to jack my style. Uh huh. It's a line from the song "We Are Young" by the band Fun. Just FYI, <laughs> if you're if you're keeping score at home. And this this week's movie, just just the world in general. I love this world. Yes, I love this world. I would watch an Estes Perkle film a million times before seeing God's Not Dead again. Yes. Because God's Not Dead and uh, Christian Mingle, the movie, which is an actual thing, um, they just suck. They just suck horribly. But these films, the Ron Ormond and Estes Perkle films, they sure, they promote fear and hostility by ruthlessly attacking things that they just don't know about. Sure, <laughs> granted, granted, but there's also something charming about them. It's difficult to pin down exactly what makes these like uh, fear mongering films charming, but there's definitely like a charm I, to them. I, I I would say that they are they are earnestly horrific. Yes, one one website I went to, I forgot the name of the website, but one website I went to said that the Roy Orman and Esther Perkle films me. Okay. Me, I am giving Eleanor fruit snacks. Why? No, I was talking to him in there. She had like a, another one. I was like, I hope she. Yeah, no, I. The, giving her fruit snacks is what is calming the beast right now. Also, nice to have you back, Amber. I we missed you. Someone giving her fruit snacks and she was just not finding a pile. No, I've got a ton of them. Whatever, whatever I can do to make this baby happy. Um, one website I went to. I don't remember the name of the website, but one website I went to described the Roy Orman and Estes Perkle films as what you would get if Ed Wood was a redneck. Yes. Yeah. And I thought that was a good, I thought that was a really good description. If Ed Wood, instead of being born in Poughkeepsie next to a movie theater, if he was born like in a farm in Alabama. So, so he would be Ed Wood in the alternate version 
of the universe that you have been creating uh, with yes. your alternate self from the previous film, um, yeah. The Burning Hell, and uh, awesome. alternate universe Ron Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah, it's all <clears throat> the butterfly effect, probably. I mean, if it's, now, if, if it's all you got, Ron Jeremy would be good in the Tor Johnson part of Plan 9. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I'm not going to take a crazy long-ass time with this week's homework. Partially because last week's homework, The Burning Hell, had a wee bit more of an actual plot, whereas this week's homework is like a ridiculous montage of paranoia and fear. Yeah. Basically, this is like a right-wing Kentucky Fried movie, in a sense. Yes, it is. Last, the burning hell has more of a plot. This is more of, um, let me talk real loud and scare you. <laughs> so, but also, last week's homework was extra long, as was the entire episode. So, the last episode, the last episode's homework, I already discussed at length the funny and bizarre story of director Ron Orman. So, I don't feel the need to go over that again. Yeah, but let's talk a bit. About the real star of these two films. And no, I don't mean Jishish. He's hardly mentioned in these films, which is yeah. weird when you think about it. These two Christian films, and I'm not sure if they even mention Jesus. But no, let's uh, let's talk about Hellfire and Brimstone Preacher, Estes Perkel. Yes. Love this man. He was born in Mississippi. That's a shocker. <laughs> I pictured him more of a New York City boy. <laughs> he was a preacher. He was a writer. He starred in three films, two with uh, Ron Orman, and we'll get to that. He also, and I love this, he wrote a lot of books, and one of the books he wrote, I may have to track down, is a, a he wrote a book in 1969 called Preachers in Space. <laughs> And in my notes, I wrote in small print, say title of book as if Muppets. Yes. So thankfully I knew what I was stuck in the bout. And apparently his, so he did three films. He did this week's film, If Footmen Tire You, What Will Horses Do? And then he followed that up with The Burning Hell. And then in 1974, um, uh, he in 1974, his film from last week, The Burning Hell, was such a big hit, and, and it toured all over America, touring yeah. in churches and high school gymnasiums, and yada yada yada. Just basically imagine what's his name, William Castle, except instead of touring around with a gimmicky horror movie, he's uh, this preacher is touring around with a gimmicky Christian horror film. That's basically what Estes Perkel did with these films. Yeah. And The Burning Hell was such a big hit that three years later, in 1977, without Ron Ormond, Estes Perkel made a follow-up. Mm -hmm. It's called The Believer's Heaven. So it, it, it's kind of a, it, it's a direct companion. Uh, piece to the burning hell. Oh, we might have to. I, 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 I don't know if I could possibly do it yet. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 well, we're gonna have to finish the trilogy, man. <laughs> yeah, it's not on YouTube, but someone made a compilation of the movie and put that on YouTube, and yeah. it's so goddamn ridiculous. A lot of white robes and harps and midgets. Yeah, it's very cray cray, which is long for crazy. It, it, and a lot of special effects that look like they come straight out of Xanadu. Just oh imagine God, Xanadu. Yeah. yeah, so like a lot of like neon and a lot of, yeah. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of smoke Xanadu special effects. Yeah. So, so I really want to, I, I really do like you said, want to find a copy of The Believer 7 just for the symmetry of seeing all three yeah. Estes Perkle films. But I also don't want to have to put any effort into looking for it. Yeah. Because fuck Estes Perkle. So all I know is that it's not on YouTube and I didn't go any farther than that. 
So, like, yeah, one day we'll have to do it, just not next. No. No, we, not need, as the we, next. we, need, we need a purple break. Yeah. And I've got, I've, I've really got some weird homework for next week, but we'll get to that. So, so, if footmen tire you, what will horses do is the hideous name of this movie. And the title comes from a Bible verse. Um, so please turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. I, I, I was trying to go for a Southern preacher, and I think I went more for uh, Jim Brockmeyer. <laughs> for those of you kids listening at home, a strap on is what mommies use to penetrate daddies. <laughs> so, Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5, and I quote If you have run with the footmen and they have tired you out, then how can you compete with horses? End quote. Aha! But that's a trick question, because everybody knows that they shoot horses, don't they? Yes. Boom. I just... I just... I just broke up your logic, pal. You just... So the, the basic prickle. premise of this... Yeah. So the basic premise of this film is that communists are murderers and rapists, and if America doesn't stop wearing miniskirts and listening to Captain and Tennille, yes. then the communists will completely take over the United States of America by 1973. Yes. And the thing, again, I mentioned this last week, but I'll mention this again. The thing that I love is that there are horror movies from the 70s uh -huh. that showed less gore than this. Yeah. There are there are uh hideous hideous horror movies from the 1970s that did not go as far as this film did. But it's okay that this film shows such uh, murder and torture and rape because it's a movie for Jesus. Like yeah. like it really kind of surprising. So the film uses like some serious blood feast style cheap ass special effects to show murder and torture and the rape of Christians by evil commies, which is odd because silly me, I thought that communism was an ideology, but nope, communism is a movement about one thing and one thing only, destroying the word of God. Yep. Yes, it and is. that is G A W D for those of you that are playing along at home. Just well, to if be you clear. if you read the Communist Manifesto, the great work of Karl Marx, um, you'll find right right in there that you know there's that one passage where it says, "Fuck the Christians," you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. Um, um. Okay. Um. This is going to sound weird. A, a, a slight aside here. Uh -huh. so, you know, so you know carrots? Carrots, okay. Carrots. Are they a fruit? I believe they're a vegetable. I forget the okay, qualifications, though. I'm just weirded out because right now I'm giving Eleanor like a crap ton of fruit snacks so that she doesn't riot. And I noticed that, okay, so, so the fruit snacks are in shapes, and there's, like, an apple, and there's, like, a, some berries. Yeah. And there's carrots. Why are there carrots? Why is there a carrot shape? There's a pear. Okay, I get that. But that's definitely either a carrot or dickin balls. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that this is a carrot. Why is there a carrot in my fruit snacks? It says here, Mott's Medley Assorted Fruit Flavored Snacks. And so why is there a carrot-shaped one? I'm so confused. <laughs> why are you fucking in this? You shouldn't be in this. No. I'm so confused. I hope it's a carrot, because I don't want to give that other thing to Eleanor. Yeah. I, but anyway. I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. Yeah. yeah. So Estes Perkle says that each and every thing in this film, here's the part that really gets me, each and everything that happens in the film have taken place in communist nations like Russia, Korea, China, and Cuba. It's like, no. Okay, dude. 
People in Cuba are drinking and smoking cigars and dancing the salsa and driving cars from 1949. They're not fucking killing Christians indiscriminately. No. But this motherfucker is just engaging in, like, literally the worst, most despicable form of fear-mongering imaginable just to, like, scare people into Christianity, basically. It's basically a communist-themed version of last week's homework, but with communism instead of hell. Estes Perkel is just making baseless accusations about something he knows nothing about just to get you to blindly hate a group of people. Yes. With that in mind, I would now like to talk to you all about the real life horrors that are occurring as we speak in the hideous godless land known as Tucson, Arizona. Uh Uh-huh. In Tucson, Arizona, there are no Christians, and any Christian that tries to spread the word of God is immediately kidnapped, tied up, and forced to watch the extended extra-long director's cut of Batman v. Superman. Oh, my God. That is that is horrible. That is horrendous. It is. And that is. Christians are persecuted. Yep. Yep. In Tucson, Arizona... They eat burned babies. They uh, they kidnap non-burned babies, and then they burn them like a Donald Trump steak, and then they eat the burned baby. It's best with a lot of butter. We call it barbecue, if you don't mind. Yeah. That was also that was also a drop it gorgeous reference. Just want to take this time to say. You eat burned babies the same way you eat lutefish. Lutefisk? Lutefisk. There you go. <laughs> I remembered. They, In Tucson. No, that just pisses me off. They're not burned. They're blackened. Okay? Yeah. Blackened babies. Yeah. It's a it's a traditional Cajun style. How do how the fuck do you eat your babies? Um, I just put just so much fucking salt on that baby. Yeah. That better I, that way. I, yeah, I can't taste anything else. I just like salt on my babies. <laughs> In Tucson, Arizona, they do not pray to God. They pray to a false god. In Tucson, Arizona, they pray to Janice, the female Muppet from the Electric Mayhem. <laughs> no one knows why. No one, no one knows why they pray to Janice from the Muppets, but they do in Tucson. These are all actual things that happen in Tucson and Cuba. Yes. Those are the two places where this happens. Tucson, Arizona, and Cuba. Identical cultures. Yeah. In Tucson, Arizona, if the roving gang of footmen find you in possession of a Bible or Janice, forgive, a chick tract, (laughs) <laughs> you are arrested, and as punishment, you are forced to be an assistant manager at a really ghetto Dollar Tree. <laughs> yeah, how much is this? Yeah, you you might think that I am pulling your leg, but all of these stories are based on actual facts. Mm-hmm. These things are here. They're happening. It's a fact, and the public ought to know about it. Yep. But last night I saw a flying object that couldn't have possibly come from this world. But I can't say a word. <laughs> I'm muscled by army brass. <laughs> I can't even admit I saw the thing. <laughs> Dude, that would be a great gay porn. Muzzled by army brass. <laughs> that por- That gay porn just writes itself. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. Throw in one one Mormon chick, and we got a hit. Boxo, oh, yeah. boffo, box office. Did you ever? Did you ever get your Mormon underwear? Uh, not yet. Ah, man, need that magical Mormon underwear. And that is it for this week's soul saving homework assignment. It's amazing. It's an amazing fucking movie, and I love it to uh, death. Is there anything that that I missed that you wanted to mention? 
Well, I just wanted to throw in. Well, first, a kid's head got chopped off. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. They shoved and the, the bamboo they, in the ear. Yeah, they shoved a, a shaft of bamboo, bamboo into a kid's ear. He was all full of blood and started to vomit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how did they make the kid vomit? That was like real fucking vomit. <laughs> yeah. So what did they do to to this kid to make him vomit? Uh, there, there. Are, well, there are no real minorities in this film. So, if they wanted a a white kid from the south to vomit, they probably just told him, "Hey, kid, black people exist," and then he just vomited. <laughs> it's like nineteen seventy. Yeah. So that's probably how they got him to vomit. Hey, kid. Mexicans exist, and then just immediate vomit. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it was it was impressive because it was real. Yeah. But I also I also ran across this really fucking strange thing that I just I, I'm only going to touch on it, not get into any real depth. But I've I've been working on the first film for Bob's Dirty Shorts. Um, okay. Bob's. Not sure what the name is. Um, okay. Midnight Mayhem I'm kind of playing around with. I had another name I completely scrapped. I can't even remember anymore. Um, Psychotic Snap. So I'm doing Don't Look in the Basement, and I've been working on the script for that and everything, and I've been looking around for any kind of materials. Have you ever seen Don't Look in the Basement? Huh? Have you ever seen Don't Look in the Basement? I don't know the the preview. I, I I know I've seen the preview like a bajillion times. I don't remember. I don't recall. So I'm it's Jeff Sessioning. Jeff Sessioning. <laughs> so it's a classic kind of the lunatics have taken over the asylum movie, which is a really yeah. good kind of a movie for Bob to do. And yeah. there is your classic retarded black man character. Yes, we've seen a lot of him. In this particular case, it was played by Bill McGee. And I wound up finding some information on Bill McGee that was really kind of interesting. Um, so pretty much one of his first jobs, he was working into, he was working in a, as an elevator operator uh, in a hotel in Dallas mm-hmm. in 1946. And there was an explosion in the building. Yeah, and they pre- and they presumed that he was dead, and they just like kind of lost him for a while because he had to go to the colored section of the hospital. Yeah, and they they had no idea who he was. They just kind of dropped him there. Hmm. And he had the amnesia from the blast, ah, which he wound up later in recovering from. So later on, after that, after kicking around for a while, he was he was uh, in the army during the Korean War, and he was sent to Yucca Flats, uh, where he and other soldiers were used basically as guinea as guinea pigs in a nuclear fucking blast. So he was really the first beast of Yucca Flats. He was the first beast of Yucca Flats, and he should have turned into the Hulk. Because basically that's what it was, is that they were going to detonate a nuclear bomb in the air for, like, the first time. And they kind of had a good idea of the range of it. So they got a bunch of soldiers to stand, like, right outside of the outside of the range so they could test after and see if they were irradiated or not. Huh. What a good fucking plan yeah. that is, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I can't believe that the that there was a, a a black beast of Yucca Flats before there was a white beast of Yucca Flats. <laughs> it's Captain America all over again. Yes, it is. I yes, remember is. the plot line maybe like 10 years ago where Captain America discovered the truth that the, C- the serum they gave him was first tested oftentimes unsuccessfully on black people. So there was a black Captain America before there was Captain America. Yeah. So so how yeah. do you how do you how do you how do you pitch that? How do you pitch that? Okay. You stand here and you'll probably be okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cuz you couldn't say like, "Hey, we're going to give you superpowers." 
And then he died in 2007 of breast cancer. Oh, that sucks. I mean, I, I, I know, I know that men do get breast cancer, and that is a serious issue, you know. But after a hotel explosion and a nuclear radiation test, God really yeah. doesn't like you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Maybe the nuclear explosion gave him like huge knockers. That is a possibility. Very, very again, very Hulk-like. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was thinking of um, Meatloaf from Fight Club, but yeah, yes. same ballpark. Yeah, yeah, that the nuclear explosion gave him bitch tits. Yes, bitch tits of rage. Yeah, raging bitch tits. If that's not a band, <laughs> then whenever there should be. It's amazing. I can close my eyes and just hear their entire debut album right now. Whenever he gets angry, his tits get huge. Yeah. Yeah. We should, we should get Marvel on the phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Verbal copyright. Verbal got, copyright. 2007. We, the Pope on Phil. Yeah. He, he died oh. in 2007. I'm, I'm backdating it. I'm backdating it. Backdating it. So anyway, we, we we now officially by copyright own everything that Bill McGee has done after his death. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. We're gonna be so fucking pretty rich. much. That's how. It is. <laughs> yeah. So that's it for that. I just wanted to drop that out there. I, you know, I I have nice. more of a write up for Bob, but you'll just have to watch that show then, won't you? Nice, nice, nice tie in. And and, that, and and I just I just was able to get a new show. It doesn't have a title yet. It's in development, but with my friend Brock, the Black Magician. Brock, the Black Magician. We're, we're gonna. He he's an occultist. I, I I don't know what the proper label is. I have, you know, um, say occultist. I like to think of him as Black Magician. It sounds a lot cooler. You magician know. American, I believe. <laughs> magician American. He's Canadian. He's magician up. Canadian. Uh, ah. So, so I talked to him. I talked to him about doing a, an occult show for our channel. That's gonna be fun. And where yeah. else? Where else would you see something like that? Exactly. You know. Exactly. Yeah. So, that should be fun. That's kind of exciting. Nice. <laughs> Bella. Why are you fighting the baby? If you could not wrestle the baby, I would appreciate that. Um, yeah, because it was a one-sided fight. Because you're so much stronger than the baby. You need to be careful. And that is it for this week's soul-saving homework assignment. And I honestly and sincerely hope that your eyes, minds, and urethras have all been suitably open. Ah, but don't think for a hot second that you're getting out of here that easily. No, 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 my friend. Don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week's homework assignment, we are diving crotch first into a bizarre world Woo! that to you and I, Bunny, will Woo! be both eerily familiar and completely foreign. All right. Both frightened and excited for the homework that I have next week. Woo! Okay? What is it? Hit me. Is, um, just buckle up for this one, okay? Uh-oh. It's going to be a weird one, which is weird coming from, from me in this podcast, but just don't laugh. Okay. <laughs> so you know the show Supernatural, right? Right. Okay. Are we doing another porn? <laughs> No, 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 no. Right. They're supernatural porns, but all the people don't look like the people they're supposed to look like. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, you can't just get a guy, you can't just get a porn actor and put him in a leather jacket and say that's Dean. No, it has to look like Dean. It's fucking ridiculous. But anyway, no, no. A long time ago, I looked into that. Yeah. Just, just to be clear, a long time ago, I looked into that. <laughs> And was disappointed. But no, we're going someplace else. Did you know 
that Supernatural, my wife's light, easy, breezy fandom, don't say obsessed, don't say obsessed, don't say obsessed. Did you know that Supernatural has been around for so freaking long and has such a big and rabid fandom that in 2010, the legendary Japanese animation studio Madhouse, the people responsible for Trigon, Death Note, and my beloved freaking One Punch Man, <laughs> they made a 22-episode anime series. Woo-hoo! Of Supernatural? Of Supernatural, yeah. Oh. One of the biggest Japanese animation studios in Japan made an anime based on an American CW television show. <laughs> like, this is so bizarre and weird and unprecedented. It's yeah. not like it's not like in Korea there's a claymation movie based on Modern Family. No. You know? It's not like in Russia there's a kid's puppet show based on the Big Bang Theory. But those things are just as weird as one of the biggest animation studios in Japan making a supernatural anime series. That's just bizarre. Yeah. Well, you, so you probably didn't know that, but now you do, and we're watching episode one. We're watching episode one. It is on YouTube. We're going to watch it and try and answer one question. Okay? Okay. One question. It's a simple question. We're just going to watch just a 22-minute anime series on YouTube. It doesn't matter what what the series is. We're just going to watch this episode, and we're going to ask one question. All right. Would we watch this? Okay. That's it. That's it. We're going to watch this one anime series and go, eh? Is it worth it? Should we bother to watch all of them? I'm assuming no, for whatever reason, and I hope to get to the bottom of this, Supernatural fans really don't give a shit about this, too. That's the bizarre thing. Yeah. Is that there are Supernatural fans... Like, you would think they would be as rabid about that as everything else. Yeah. There are Supernatural fans out there who write Supernatural fandom and have Supernatural shirts and a Supernatural tattoo and go to all the Supernatural conventions and are obsessed with Supernatural, but you mention the anime and they go, ew. (laughs) That sucks. And I'm surprised by that. You would think that a Supernatural fan would be into everything, but there are so many people that just don't like this anime, and that's surprising to me because it's like, oh my god, this is... They made One Punch Man, and they also made a supernatural anime show. That's good. That's phenomenal to me. It's like suddenly learning that, like, Guatemala is obsessed with Bob Ross. Yes. (laughs) You know? Yeah. So they made, like, a musical play based on the life of Bob Ross. Like, you would think that's weird. I totally would. Like a 22 episode series of supernatural anime that's just that's, that's just amazing to me so there's a part of me that thinks that i could get into this but there's also a part of me that thinks that this is probably gonna suck ass but there is a bit of an, an attraction in that supernatural fans don't like this yeah yeah there's something about that that all that i also like that there are so many fans out there that have like disavowed this series that I go, really? In that case, I might have to take a look at this. Yeah. Let's let's find out. Let's what's so, under the what's under the hood. Yeah. So that is what we are doing next week. Supernatural, the anime. And please kick me that link when you can. I will. And my wife just gave me the finger. And I'm not sure why I'm not being in any way negative towards Supernatural. Why Why was that? Why did you give me the finger there, honey? I don't know. It just felt right. It have, just you felt seen right. The, have you seen the Supernatural anime? You've already told them I haven't. No, I... Did I? I don't think I did right now. Unless I heard you incorrectly. When I was no, there. I'm pretty sure that you heard what? me incorrectly. I'm pretty sure I didn't say that. No, I told you. I, I, I don't recall you having been mentioned at all. Yeah, I, I haven't mentioned you at all. 
No, I did mention you. I said yeah, uh, I know you did. my I wife's knew. light, easy breezy fandom. Don't say obsessed. Don't say obsessed. Oh yeah, say just it. just in the, in the beginning. Yeah. I heard you talking about me, talking about my fandom, talking about my crazy ass fandom. No, I'm talking about the fans are crazy oh, ass. I'm not saying you're crazy ass. You don't have a tattoo. Oh my god! All these people getting tattoos. I want to get a supernatural tattoo. It's going to say, it's going to be really small, and it's going to say TM. TM stands for trademark, and that's actually at the end of every supernatural episode. I don't know uh-huh. why people have tattoos of their fandoms. Like, you realize this show's not going to be around forever. It was going to be meaningless. Like, do people go around with love boat tattoos and shit like that? Because. <laughs> Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like there's an old guy with a BJ and the bear tattoo on his arm. Yeah. And he's like, Steve that show was great. About how I'm obsessed. And I told him, <clears throat> you're confusing obsessed with something I'm really into. Like, I'm not walking around with a tattoo. I know people in this fandom who have several supernatural tattoos. And you know what? If it means something to them, fine, whatever. Because they're like, oh, so can you stop? Well, Nobody wants to hear you right now. Well, then, do you know why this cartoon is so shunned? Yeah, do you know why this cartoon is shunned? I'm not, I mean, I don't know, maybe the entire fandom doesn't shun it. I just heard that the voice acting is shit. Which is weird, because... It doesn't line up with canon. Like, Which is weird, because uh, Jensen Eccles, who plays Sam, who is also Dean in Gilmore Girls, does the voice no, acting. That's uh, Jordan. Oh, Jared Padalecki. There you go. He does the voice for his character in every episode. So when people say that the voice acting sucks, it's like, no, that's the guy from the show. That doesn't so, mean anything. You, you have yourself said voice acting is not the same as on-screen acting. That's a good point. So he might be a good actor, but not a good voiceover actor. Yeah. Can you yeah, stop can, it? Yeah, Jesus I can see that. Child, nobody Shh. wants to hear you cry, and I don't want to rip my titty out right now. So yeah, she's trying to undress you there, damn. trying to get to the milk. <gasps> so, anyway, that's next week, and it's going to be exciting, it's going to be different, and I'm interested in watching this. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I watched like the first five minutes, and like my jaw was on the floor, and I'm like, I don't, uh, okay, I. I either can't watch this. I wasn't. I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It, it was. It was 100 percent different from what I was expecting. It will help up. Help us build up antibodies against the Burkle, uh before yeah. tracking down and fi- going into his final movie. And we're gonna fucking need that. Yeah, the believers' heaven. Yeah, we're, we're gonna need. We're, we're we're gonna need iron, and we're gonna need calcium. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna eat a lot of carrots. So a Japanese cartoon about an American TV show. Yeah, that the fans of such show hate. Hold on. Yeah, that sounds so Japanese, that sounds like yeah. exactly what we need. Yeah. Japanese anime. It's based on an American TV show that's filmed in Canada. That's filmed in Canada. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And that the rabbit fans don't seem to particularly like. We have to figure out how to get the Belgians in on that. Yeah, yeah. They they they're probably craft services, I would imagine, on the show. Is is I what would I would imagine. guess. And and, yeah. and and while I'm there, just let me let me take a second to say, you know, fuck you, Belgium. Just fuck you. Yeah. Have you heard yeah. what? Have you fucking heard what Belgium has done lately? No, nothing. Because fucking Belgian never does a goddamn thing. Exactly. Just fucking there you sit. go. I'll be an old Belgiany, you know. Yeah. Rob Van, Jean Claude Van Damme. That's that's what you've that's what you've contributed to modern society. Yeah, Jean Claude Van Damme. Thank you. Thank nice. you so much, Belgian. Yeah. <laughs>